Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be friends, frenemies, and people you should never trust. I've got an email. This is from a guy. He says he started following me back in 2019. He read my first book, 3% Man, when he's in the process of going through a divorce. And he says he didn't want to go through the divorce. He doesn't go into the details of why they were going through the divorce. But about six months after their divorce was finalized, she came to him crying, broke down, said she wanted to get back together. They started seeing each other. And I guess a few weeks into them seeing each other again, they're now back together and happily married. They have a 15-year-old daughter together. Daughter is ecstatic that her mom and dad are back together, which obvious reasons. And But when a couple weeks into their dating again, when they were starting to get back together... He says, hey, let's invite my best friend from high school and his wife to double date. And she's like, he's not a friend. And apparently, while they were split up, this friend who's married, keep in mind, had tried to hook up with his soon-to-be ex-wife in that process. And, and then there were other times, I guess, back years previously when this friend friend would go after women he was interested in or dating or whatever <clears throat> so they haven't talked in a while because i guess apparently he told what had happened to another mutual friend he's pretty sure that mutual friend relayed the message and he hasn't spoken to the, that guy and the dude, dude hasn't reached out or anything he's thinking I, maybe i should call him and apologize you know see if i can get him to apologize or whatever and is it worth saving the friendship so that's my opinion because i've had an experience like this when I was younger, I had a guy who was, my, he was actually the best man in my wedding. And when my, and I wrote, I believe I wrote about it in 3% Man. I can't remember if I, th I think I might have wrote about it in Mastering Yourself as well. But I had told, I confided in him everything I was thinking and feeling about my marriage. And I was going to have a talk with my wife that night. And when I sat down to actually talk with her, she already knew everything. I was like, how did you know all this? She wasn't surprised at all. I was like, well, that's kind of weird. And then she tells me, oh, my best friend informed her of everything that I had shared, supposedly in confidence with him. And later on down the line, when we were further along in our divorce, we were having, I think I was having lunch or dinner with my, my ex-wife at the time. We were just shooting the shit, hanging out because we had a good, we had a good relationship. And we, even when we split up, we had a good relationship. And she proceeds to tell me that he basically tried to fuck her. I was like, oh, that's just great. And so there were other things that happened. I wrote about in Mastering Yourself because he, he worked for my one of my business partners and his division of the company. And then left the guy left on real bad terms. And I didn't talk to him for a long time. And then a few years ago, he got back in touch, wanted to get back together, and then just jacked me around when we were trying to make plans to get together. It was like... This fucker, ain't, this guy ain't changed in 20 years. He's still the same, same dude. And uh, Andy, who you may have seen some of the podcasts I've done, knows. I remember he called him, and you know the guy was telling about what he was doing in real estate these days. And then he hung up. First thing Andy says is, "He's still full of shit." So it's like I, you may have heard me say this before. People don't change. They may become a better version of who they are, but it basically they don't. They don't change. You can't a, a tire does not change its stripes. It's just the way it is. When, Like Maya Angelou said, when somebody tells you who's, who they are or shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So he says, Hello, Corey. I started getting into your work after I was going through a divorce with my wife in 2019. During this tough time of divorce, I tried confiding in a friend of mine who I thought I could trust. I know what that's like. I feel, I feel your pain. We have been friends since high school and have done many things and trips together as friends do. After being divorced from my wife for six months, she came over in tears wanting to get back together. Mind you, I didn't want to get divorced in the first place, but it was her decision because she felt like she wasn't happy and had many difficult situations she was dealing with from her family, which I think contributed to our drifting apart. <clears throat> I don't really want to get into the reasons for divorce, but I am glad to say that we are back together and remarried happier than ever. Well, congratulations to you guys. 
everybody loves a happy ending. Now, not many people have happy endings where they go back to their wife who divorced them in the first place. But it doesn't mean that not a single one of those will ever work out. The odds are not in your favor, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're one of those couples that will make it. Our 15-year-old daughter is also thrilled. After we were seeing each other again for about a week or so, I asked her if she would want to get together with a friend of mine and his wife who was also married with three kids. Married with three kids. So one thing I would say is if you're trying to work out things with your ex-wife who you split up with from a divorce, two weeks in, I would not be going on double dates with anybody. You should be just focusing on you, your wife, and obviously your baby girl who's not such a baby girl anymore. She's 15, but... Point being is you focus on your family, your triad, the three of you. This is three of you. She proceeded to tell me that he is not my friend. <clears throat> of course, I questioned why, and she told me that during our separation, he had reached out to her. He's being so helpful, such a helpful friend. This is basically what my friend did as well. And basically asked, asked if she would hook up with him. I'm thankful that she told me this, but at the same time, it really disturbed me. Yeah, I wasn't happy either. I was thinking, that motherfucker. It's like, I remember sitting there with my wife. I could, I could see the day like it was yesterday. We're sitting in our bed and we're talking. And I have this thing that I had agonized over for a long fucking time finally get the courage and the balls to tell her what I was really thinking and really feeling. And she already knows everything because my friend had been puking up all the details, trying to ingratiate himself to her. You know why? Because he was trying to get in her pants. That was it. He didn't care. He just wanted to fuck her. I think his, his pickup line to her and they were hanging out at lunch, he said, so you want to fuck her or what? I think it was something along those lines. Which can work if there's mutual interest, but he was trying to be the friend and fly under the radar. Because he was a little slimy. That's just kind of the way he was. And I was naive. And you know what's funny? It's like even my parents didn't like him when I was hanging out with him in high school. They were right. Mom and dad were right. After thinking about it, it really doesn't surprise me because he has always hit on any girl that I have ever been with. Oh, look at that. So we have a track record. That's just, that's dickish. Because I could just kind of, th th this old friend of mine, his attitude was like, hey, all's fair in love and war. And quite frankly, you don't deserve to be with those girls. I'm, I'm better than you and I should have those girls. That's kind of, his, it was his attitude. He thought he was better than me. It's like, well, he found it the hard way. He wasn't. Since we've been back together, I have cut off all contact with that friend and I haven't heard from him either. And I'm assuming it's because I told another friend about what he had said to my wife and that it got back to him. My question is, should I ever reach out to him to save the friendship or should I cut it off forever? Oh, hold on one second here. I got to make a little slight modification on my mug. He belongs in the streets. He's out of there. Gonzo. See you later, sucker. He belongs in the streets. Look at that beautifully modified mug. You can get these at spring.com, the Coach Corey Wayne store. Obviously, the she belongs in the streets. Maybe I should make one up that says he belongs in the streets. I have to get Jennifer to do that. He says, I'm leaning towards never speaking to him again for the rest of my life. Oh, one more time. He belongs in the streets. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out, sucker. <laughs> he says, thanks, Corey. I would appreciate your insight on dealing with close friends, supposedly close who betray you. Well, this guy betrayed you over and over. And in all fairness, so did my friend. He did it many times. This was also the guy that wrecked my Lotus Esprit that I wrote about in Mastering Yourself. I had this fucking car two, two days. What was I, eight, nine? 
trying to think. This is 98, 99. So I was like 28, 29 years old, making multiple six figures. First time in my life. Buy this exotic car. And we were roommates at the time. We were living together. And I let him. He's like, oh, let me take it to work. So he takes it to work. Dude's hot rodding around. You know, showing it off to one of the other guys at Realtors that he knew. And the dude wipes out and hits a concrete light pole, snaps the pole in half, causes like close to $20,000 worth of damage. I didn't get the car back for almost six months. So because the factory was closed, you know, like in the UK, the Lotus, the the company that made the Lotus Esprit, they, they closed down for like a month, month and a half just for their holidays. And so they weren't making any parts or anything. So literally, it was about two months we were just waiting to be able to even order the parts because the factory was freaking closed. Anyways, and then it, it took a couple times for them to get the car right so it was running right. So I save up my money. i all excited. I had this new car. I literally drive it to work one day. The next day, I let him drive it, and he wrecks the thing. And then it's just, you know, that had the attitude that he had towards – he didn't even want to drive down with me to Palm – you know, because we were living in Orlando to this place called it was Palm Beach Motor Cars, I think to get the car when it was ready to be picked up it was just a dick about it and the dude's not in my life anymore and good fucking riddance and same thing with this guy good fucking riddance it's like he's he'll do it again that's who he is he's he's hit on every one of your girls is like yeah that fucker he belongs in the streets i would never call or talk to him again for any reason because he ain't gonna change it's the way he is same thing with this guy it's you know even even andy said the same thing dude's full of shit still the same guy same dude that my parents didn't like all those 30-something years ago. It is who it is. And you'll be much better without him. you got to really watch who you allow into your inner circle because they will fuck you over if you're not paying attention. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandrelationships.com, click the Products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Music.